levels of, of education and couldn't get sensitive and uh, uh, free as in free, which is published in collaboration with a publication studio, and it's their uh, English contributions to the poems for that email. And also in the next Sunday is something I show uh, called Go Alone, which runs in mm -hmm. Carmen uh, and the same fact. Um, yeah. If you have any questions or if you want to come to our mailing list for this month or your website, I don't know what you go to, but you should. Uh, I do want to you know up from the best so or you can get in contact with us. That's the way to do it. Um, okay, so that's all we got to have now. Uh, I'm just going to go straight into the announcing for our entries and our speakers. So, Victoria Andes, my personal name. Uh, is an artist, poet, writer, and public organizer based in Oregon, Oregon. She has studied at First High Quality Foundation University, PhD, uh, in Berkeley, New York. Emmanuel Arturo Aru is a poet and artist from the Bronx. Um, they live in Portland, Oregon. They are the writer of the book List of Consonants, published by Wildcat Press, and have a linguistics. But they have been a linguistics research assistant at Green College. Did you mail this to Rachel? Yes, I Oh, I said, did you? Did you? Um, um, <laughs> <laughs> is this true? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Can I send you my resume or something? Um, did you follow your website? I don't know. I, I didn't see all of this. That's yet. cool. Um, and you're a managing editor at Civil uh, Coping Organizations. I'm sure that. <laughs> yeah, me too. Okay, that's great. Uh, so, Manuel and Victoria run Home School, which is a free pop up art school in Portland, uh, and it provides welcoming context for critical engagement with contemporary art and its issues. Uh, its pedagogy honors the casual reader of the analogy of school uh, through the Greek school, uh, meaning spare time, leisure, idleness, and rest. So, that's what I want to uh, Homeschools tends to see curriculum supported by the Prince of Fun, uh, the Andy Warhol Foundation for Visual Arts, and the Alvin Foundation, uh, Ali Rawabi. Um, Alejandra Salinas is an artist uh, in the base in Seattle. Um, she's part of the artist duo with Aaron Bergen, and they produce media, performance, internet, and sound, and social works. Uh, in the interdisciplinary conceptual and socially engaged practice. Uh, Alejandro Sanders has taught in art schools, uh, including the Mania Art Academy and Nalmo Academy of Art and Shrine's Time Art Academy, Sky Art College in Denmark, and the International Academy of Art, Palestine. Uh, Alejandro Sanders and uh, Aaron, they founded. Institute of New Content Action, which is Ava, uh, started in Detroit in 2010 and now is in Kiri in Seattle since 2013. Uh, it's an artist run initiative that focuses on language within the art field as well as language preservation and emphasizes particularly issues of transformation and translation. Um, so we have Philip Wall Center, Wall Center uh, who is an writer, organizer, and political activist, and he's based in Seattle. His project in 1983, around issues of capitalism and urban settings, has also been a book of Invisible Scale, the novel by Scale. Uh, he studied at the Columbia University and was part of the occupation of the university in 1968 and a part of the protests in opposition to the U.S. government in the Vietnam War. Uh, Philip is planning, uh, is currently planning the Red Bay University, which will be a self organized university after the Red Bay events uh, in 2017. Red Bay Seattle will bring intellectuals and artists from different parts of Seattle from the Seattle community uh, during the month of May. And so, our last uh, speaker today, uh, Anne Jahal, or Anne Jahal, sorry, is a co founder of the Vancouver Institute for Social Research. Um, which is an independent para academic and theory based free school and began in February 2013. Uh, he works at the Simon Fisher University with the Cultural Unit and is the co founder of the University of British Columbia's Humanities for One program and is also the chair of the Impact on Communities Coalition. 
He has a doctorate in media, in media philosophy at the European Graduate School in Sicily, and he completed his dissertation in ecological and genetic politics by now in the end of the year in 2014. So that's all of our speakers. And, um, so we're going to use this mic uh, both during the discussion because it provides for our audio to come uh, in over uh, Skype. And then when you guys are your questions, uh, please use this mic as well. And holding it at the bottom, this distance away from your case is a better idea. So uh, yeah, with that, um, you guys can just start talking. <laughs> <laughs> is there an order? Um, I think we can start maybe with you guys. And so I, I'm really curious, uh, just like how the product started. And, and I haven't watched all 10 hours of your video, but you guys invite a huge variety of speakers, and you also change the end of the time. Like you list exactly where I did the comments beforehand, and I find the, like, the migration of the project was really interesting to you, but really it's what I want to talk about. I can give a little context to set you up. Um, so, <laughs> um, about this time last summer, uh, shortly after Victoria moved back to Boring from Brooklyn, uh, we started talking about her kind of disappointing experience with another alternative arts education program which didn't have distance learning. Um, and that's cool. I mean, they're focused in New York and that they focus on New York artists and the New York art scene um, and don't have any opportunities for people outside of New York to engage with the, the curriculum and the pedagogy. So we wanted to create a context that allowed for that, not only in terms of, um, you know, everything is streamed online and then archived for viewing later, um, but also just with a focus on the internet as opposed to seeing it as a secondary documentation tool. Um, and so Victoria's kind of disappointment or lack of access to that context was the catalyst for the project. And maybe she can speak more specifically to that disappointment or the, the, the responses to it that we had. Um, sure. Um, so, yeah. So Hey guys, I'm really happy to see you all. And thank you so much for inviting us. I don't know if I have a speech for this thing. I'm really happy. Um, yeah, so I moved back to Boring um, last March, and um, before that, I was pretty involved at, in at the Psychology Commission University that just mentioned, um, which is, uh, is a wonderful resource. Um, and I think one of the, the I'd say driving model of alternative arts education is started by a group of like Canadian graduates who um who um, um, started it's a free art school um, and the model was when I joined it was uh I um, considered an air space, which is um, like a place to work and work and work, but I can go and connect. So, to me, art school, or my experience with art school, has always been kind of a social um, experience, and it's a way to connect with other interesting people. And um, yeah, so when I look back, I um, was kind of hoping I could just get to know them. Even in this from these classes, uh, even if I couldn't get in person, but um, that I didn't have that access. So um, I was lamenting my last and it was like,
idea is brief for this university is run by Corbett Sturges and is doomed. <laughs> the term comes from Aristotle, which immediately legitimates the institute as totally not a joke. We will be spending actual, real, non-monopoly money to study well-being. Major interest in Aristotle is essential to the seminal work of the West. The Institute will also bring together professionals from across the university who believe that capitalism contributes meaningfully to a humane and just society, which it does. It says so right there on the website of our named after a bank center for the study of capitalism. Okay, there's more, it's on the regular website. Uh, and, uh, uh, so that's the university now, in a uh, sort of essentialized neoliberal university. Uh, adjuncts to uh, uh, the, the uh, territorial services subcontract with Alex Malala's better, uh, starting universities abroad, uh, and eventually joining the metrics of all the departments. So, uh, the broad campus is so very return and the uh, uh, philosophy department and philosophy department has to go. It's hard to see a word back from that. So, so the question I want to ask is sort of uh, slipping it under the, the title of this instead of alternative approaches for our education as alternative sites. Like a popular school, for example, I um, uh, like a Inca Institute, which uh, includes everything from an autonomous university to all kinds of discussions, um, and to uh, a project which I'm launching with the next May called May. Uh, the project has two constraints one with unread, and the other <laughs> assumed for the uh, whole month that the market is not the solution to the problems that the market creates. It's a kind of be a communist for month festival. And uh, so uh, it will include, uh, I would say, art and thought. Uh, the art is what I hope will cast a, a delightful red glow on everything else that happens during the month. I mean, literally take the color red and go it any way you want. It's being put together in a kind of collage fashion. It's not, that is to say, there's no way, there's no hierarchy in terms of, uh, you know, you want to do something, because it sounds good, well, I'll do it. That's the way I did it on the front of the I was a part of the 80s called Invisible Seattle, uh, which I did uh, this novel of Seattle by Seattle Project, where everybody just walked down the street and gathered a few of his words and put them into a gigantic literary computer. So that's kind of the art part of the general idea. Um, in terms of what uh, a Red Bay University would be for a month, it would have to be free, like, like all free universities, because we're trying to distinguish it from what this is going to be. Uh, it would have to be non credentialed the people who are producing it. Or following or doing it through their own delightful pleasure, or to sort of collaborate with other people in the process of making something. But as to what those particular subjects or projects are that a regular university, regular university would include for that month, that is again totally up in the air. You know, it's not that it has to be, everything has to be uh, the Stratford School and Florio and and the development of the new new material uh, reading blocks or uh, you know activism or something like that. It could be a matter of modern math mathematics, it could be people just moving in a certain way for, for three classes for a month. And and the purpose is to come up with an interesting site to do each class. Imagine if you will that all of Seattle is a campus. That's what the campus is, and the little red light bulbs indicating what the classroom is. Now, there are a lot of, uh, there are a lot of models out there that feed into my imagination the things that possibly could be. Uh, you know, there are things like the Brooklyn Institute for Social Research, which is a, 
of course, uh, gives classes that cost money, like three hundred dollars or so, to I guess, uh, give money to the instructors and to local universities and donate their time. But uh, they teach in diamonds, you know, in the parks. And, and so, and, you know, maybe we will have a class on the Eleven statue for many years for for every equipment. I'll just move on. Uh, we can get into details later. I'll let someone else talk. I'm going to turn off this slide. Oh, yeah, that sounds great. Uh, so we're going to talk about your project and your audience and ask questions. So, music, what's next? So, um, yeah, take it away. Great. Thank you. Here's some talk about the background. So, Holly is in the defense. Um, uh, thank you for the dedication to Johnny. I'm sorry I couldn't be there uh, in person. I'm going to make a before I talk about for social research to so probably most relevant for this um, uh, discussion. I just want to talk about a few kind of experiments in Vancouver, which are historical in nature, which we kind of walk into that history back in the early 70s. There was a, a free university where the Vancouver East Cultural Center sits now that ran for about four or five years. That was a very important uh, intervention in that in the time. Uh, I was involved in the late 90s with a small uh, free liberal arts um, uh, program uh, set in the inner city of Vancouver. It was uh, funded out of uh, UBC, which is one of the big universities here. Uh, the model on the Clemente course that was set up in, in New York, which is sort of providing uh, free liberal arts uh, education for residents uh, in the inner city. We provided child care, food, bus passes. Uh, the, the program still runs today and, and it's become institutionalized in, in a different type of way. But I also have interest uh, in alternative education uh, interventions. Partly, I'm the first person in my family to go to university, and going to university itself was a very uh, alienating experience uh, for me, and certainly the things that I did outside of actual classes is where I really received my education. I was able to do um, graduate university in Hungary. A number of my professors had been involved in something called flying universities uh, at the time, which in the 80s, and Poland and Hungary, where uh, people mobilizing together, meeting together, uh, was under the repression of the state. And so, uh, oftentimes, these things would be uh, put forward like uh, places where people would be able to discuss ideas, reading groups, these types of things. And this, uh, I never actually did as a critique of the EU when, when I was there, but this. Uh, uh, when the Olympics happened uh, in Vancouver in 2010, there was a particular social political makeup here that was a real closure to the public sphere that was happening. It was rampant um, uh, capitalism, objectification, a lot of housing evictions going on, and also a uh, closure in terms of the media of what we could actually uh, talk about. Uh, in that context, we set up Vancouver Flying University, which was uh, a project we got back in 2008 with uh, urban subjects art collective, and so we really found that uh, partnering with um, uh, the, the really important artists from the centers here uh, provided a place outside of the academy and other traditional uh, structures. Even humanities one of one that we started back in the late 90s that also started uh, out of the Moore Gallery, which uh, was a long-standing artist from the center from the early 80s uh, in, in Vancouver. So in 2010, during in the actual uh, Olympic period, one of the centers called Vivo, Video In, Video Out, which has a really important social cultural history in Vancouver, uh, goes back to the seven is they hosted a, a project called Safe Assembly, which was run by a, a collective. It didn't accept any of the Olympics uh, cultural party, was most of the art institutions in, in the city that died. And so I had to provide a really important venue for art activists and other critics in the city to actually gather in this type of place. So this was all stuff going on in the, in the background. In the summer of 2010, uh, a friend of mine, Matt Hearn, who started the Purple Thistle Center, which is an anarchist youth collective that ran for 15 years, uh, we, uh, a number of professors and other people, uh, were involved with the Purple Thistle Institute in the summer of 2010, which is a kind of two-week theory boot camp for uh, mostly young activists came from many people who didn't have the opportunity to go to university or uh, were taking time off, etc. Some people were going on, but this was a real mix 
uh, a group of people. So there's been sort of these types of uh, interventions uh, happening. Um, at that time, uh, I went to study at European Graduate School, which is another kind of experimental institution of a, of a different kind, very theoretical nature. I come from working at a community organizer and a theory person, and so uh, part of coming back to school and uh, even working inside an institution like SFU where we're doing community education projects like uh, community journalism with the Megaphone magazine, the, the local street newspaper here. We run a community journalism class where people write stories from a, a community perspective. That because I've been involved in those other community projects, that the desire to do something more of a theoretical nature and more at the graduate school level is what our interest was. Um, and to take it outside of the university and also the kind of bureaucratic classification of the university uh, to make something barrier free, tuition free, and also something that spoke a little bit more to the crisis of the moment. So, once again, we partnered with the Board Gallery uh, of this small artist from center. Uh, and this was not a formal part of their programming. The gallery is only open Tuesdays to Saturdays, but uh, Sundays and Mondays it's closed to the public. So we asked them if we could access the space on the evenings. They gave us a, a key and the alarm code, and we basically self organized. And in the entire period of the project, which started in 2013, we run five or six sessions after we're about to start another session for the fall. No money has changed hands in the entire. Uh, processing of, of, of the project. Uh, none of the instructors have been paid, us as organizers uh, uh, aren't paid, and nobody pays to come into it. So those have, those have other kinds of uh, issues of exhaustion and those types of things that can happen, but there's something about the generosity of uh, everybody involved that has made a, a new type of a space. And we actually have very good relationships with both institutes at UBC and SFU and their opportunities to get funding if we, if we uh, the life, but the, the, the uh, opportunity to create something that is a relationship to activism in the city, that is activist, uh, a relationship to the art community, and a relationship to the academy itself, that takes it outside of the institution into an art gallery space, which makes it more informal and more welcoming. And so we actually have a range of people who are from those communities. We have people who have graduate degrees, PhDs, and how we have people who have no formal education that are interested in a, a theoretical um, uh, relationship to what people are speaking about. And so, uh, to me, uh, that kind of aspect of having a range of things happening in whatever city you're located in is so important. Just because we have this one intervention, it doesn't mean we don't need a feminist for art school, it doesn't mean we don't need uh, other types. We need about 20 or 30 institutions in the city because Vancouver, like many places, is a bubble or cut off by the border where cut off from other uh, Canadian urban centers. And so uh, the issues here are so uh, deep and uh, really require different types of uh, intervention. So this is one small thing that we've done. It and certainly we are influenced by other kind of academic interventions happening in, in other cities. Um, uh, there's probably over 100 happening in, in the US at any given time. And, and we're just kind of part of a space uh, for ourselves and keep the kind of community going in relation to uh, our activism uh, and the academy. I'll, I'll leave it at that for now. I would say that 100% of everything that I access is part of our ambition, too, to figure out ways to combine, to study the lineage of all of the pan-academic city universities from the 60s to the present, and to have a you know, bar on steel and everything you think is good, and then to, to create in Seattle, which is a space where there are. Uh, which is just right for the moment, where uh, everything becomes more uh, coalesces in the place where the theory, the activism, the, the, the public interventions uh, 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 spark each other in a kind of continuous cycle of struggles. Any of you have any? Uh, 
question that we would like to start off with. Operation that is not only 
And certainly without those supports in place, I wouldn't be able to have the kind of voluntary time to be able to do those experiments and function outside the institution. There are real, very real questions about the exhaustion that comes from that type of commitment and how to sustain and build out um, uh, institutions, uh, paramedic institutions that can sustain themselves. And this is a real uh, uh, challenge. And I think these are important questions that we need to consider because the other ones I've been involved with the group has been to institutionalize the humanities. One, one has been around since 98, but you can see the side of the and I've other questions that come up and need to build something new. Maybe sometimes it's okay to let things start as well, like the project that I heard has been involved with, they actually just closed the purpose of uh, last year, but they did it in a joyous way. It felt like its time was up. Uh, so I, I think those are important questions that we ought to keep considering circulating because there is no easy answer to how we build up to scale all these types of things. Yeah, I think the thing that we also should consider is maybe linking the two ways in which we can use the institution. I think it's very interesting when students do think it's like the same. Supposed to be sustainable, right? Maybe like it just ends, it comes to an end, and 
we go back to the competency, we go back to the, the site of kind of originary revolution or originarily antipathic gesture because it's already that like, we're already fighting back. And we don't need to like feel as though a lack of these kinds of projects means that there is no um pushback against the liberalism and education because there is and there is within the institution and outside of it. Um, and people that are fighting back don't need us to do these projects. We just do it because we have, in my opinion, what folks are doing is important and it's cool for the sub team. So yeah. maybe not be sustainable is okay. I just have a quick question because um, I mean, uh, we, we all kind of wonder about the different school forms to write an essay and how important it is in, in, in education. Um, which, me and Justin, for example, we just graduated two years ago from the university, and uh, it was great for us because of the resources that was available to us. So I want to bring this conversation to you one level down, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, from, from the student perspective, and, uh, and, and, uh, and emphasize that uh, it may be, uh, or maybe say the question if, if there is a way um, that we can see the university. Uh, yeah, because uh, I mean, Aaron, Aaron, uh, Aaron Bergman uh, brought up a great point last week during the autonomous university session. Uh, which, by the way, autonomous university is a, um, is a university that is uh, happening uh, monthly. Uh, and, uh, I would have as well, it's, it's, it's uh, organizing it. It's an income. It's an income, yes. Um, so, Aaron brought up this point that he said, um, well, well, everything is becoming prioritized to a point that it's, it's working in the new world way that, that it's supposed to, you know? So, so, so I, I'm, I'm wondering if there's a way that we can, because, you know, like, you know as students, you know, the, the way the university is leaning towards is, is this way of job market where when you come in and you can get a degree and you can get out. So, the only reason that the art school exists is because the economy uh, of, for example, the engineering class uh, would be entertaining. When we're at law school, we feel good that they have an art, uh, you know, there's an art program on campus just as much as the sports uh, is, is going on and everybody's interested. So, so we look at finding that, you know, you can see, see those changes. But, um, but uh, to another uh, point in high school, that, uh, you, know, you can get in and then use that resources and do whatever you want to do outside of it. So maybe there is a chance that we could do better work to the university with these kind of movements that is autonomous and is happening on the side and how important they are. So 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 I think that the like, existence of this kind of the need for this kind of movements is it is it is really important uh, at, at the moment, you know, because because you know they, the, the students go in you know, to you know, your class, for example, and, and then they are introduced to the world where they have their clues. You know, we don't know like what else could it be that is not you know a picture. So that was just what I was saying. Uh, I was going to say that um, I think starting at an actual university is perfectly fine way. Going <laughs> way to find alternatives. I think Tanya and I have found Weedow to be uh, a really great site to do a whole bunch of things that I don't know what's going on. Um, and then what I do find out sometimes you can convince them to, to, um, to approve it. But I think starting from university um, is that it's um, just the primary thing to make things, to make resources there. It's a great place to start seeing uh, the university parallels to the university, whether or not it's actually in the building or it's going on with that. Uh, it's approval, so I think it's a great place to start. It's a great starting point. Um, did you have a point or? If you have a point, I was going to just ask something. Well, that was really important. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think the notion of the invisible university within the university is important to sustain. And I think uh, what's done outside of the university also has to be performed in a way that it says to the university, we are doing what you are phasing out and shouldn't be phasing out. I really believe that 
one of the way that, the ways to do is to change is when the alumni started dangling in the university because it's become like a factory. That's what happened at the University of Virginia, uh, where the dean wouldn't cut the classics department, and so the board fired the dean, the board for all these business school people uh, who had strategic disruption as their mantra and wanted to imitate the for profit university for seniors. What happened was the board, the business department was founded by Thomas Jefferson. And all the uh, all the alumni took a certain pride in the fact that there was a, maybe too much pride in the tradition went back to partner. The dean had to get in. So I'm saying it was leverage that could be, I think when I was at the university one of the exercise leverage on the university. Yes. Sending out proposals for events and um, 
just hoping that you know our, our pedagogies and our programming will dovetail as well. Um, so it is out of necessity in a certain sense, but at the same time, I think that that constraint has been really helpful for us and really generative in terms of like finding out whether values overlap and finding out if the space is a, I guess, a candidate for a sustainable and equitable relationship, right? Um, and obviously there are lots of spaces, I'm not gonna name any because that's ridiculous, but lots of spaces that, you know, don't answer your emails or don't, will say that they want to do something but then won't respond at all after that. Or, you know, just a number of different things that can come up that kind of reveal um, ideological distances, I guess, and that's not a problem. It's just a, a good thing to realize before the event itself, right? That's my perspective. I, it's a pop-up out of necessity, but the pop-up list has become an important way of like delineating the values. Like doing a play, 
The world has disappeared you know, in the last two weeks, and that's it. And you can look at it in short bursts. And I have a question for the gentleman on the side. If someone yeah. does want to experience some uh, alternative educational spaces, I would like to know if you can I would like to ask this question to all of you as well. What are some resources or some literature or philosophy by certain individuals that we ourselves can look into in order to create these same models in our people? The question was for you. Um, yeah, sure. I, I can I can start. I think that there's uh, depending on the model by which people are working and, and uh, the histories of how many of them have been uh, initiated. You can go everywhere from Paulo Freire in Brazil to uh, the work that Earl Schwartz did. Uh, Murray Bookchin's work with the Institute for Social Ecology. Uh, but right now, there's a burgeoning sort of. Uh, 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 loop and I don't know the specific text uh, around it, but the whole paradigm, paradigmatic area where they're looking at the academic journal and uh, reworking. So, women, uh, I think it's called Tower of Naval, I'm just forgetting her name right now, but there's a whole series of people working right now amongst their academic institutions, particularly in the US. I can send the uh, information uh, to Justin and uh, Howie. Um, you know, in the 90s, it was very much, in, at least in Vancouver, the anarchist free school was a particular type of model. And it's interesting that uh, even in doing something like Vancouver Institute for Social Research that has a kind of relationship to graduate level theory and doing it out of the art gallery, we've also been hit with critiques of a particular kind, uh, one of which comes from the art world, which is that um, in the uh, area of social practice or as an art project, it doesn't play. Uh, fit the, the, the parameters. And so our attributes of activists that well, we're not an art project, we happen to be working out of the art gallery and they're uh, providing space for us. We have a critique that comes from the academy, which is that we're not rigorous enough or that we don't provide um, uh, a course credit or those types of things, which isn't our, our interest in, in the second place. And also we get a critique from the activist world as well, which is that we're not formally organizing. Uh, around a particular issue and those types of things. And so by creating an alternative space as well, there's almost a, a, a need to create a, a new language and a literature around these types of experiments because they're not fitting in uh, to particular uh, tropes that have historically worked for free schools uh, as well. So it's not a great uh, answer, but I can send a bunch of uh, material that uh, we've been influenced by uh, up here in Vancouver. What would people like to see in Seattle? I have a sense that a lot of things are already happening in Seattle and there are synergies that could be produced. Sort of reading groups or uh, uh, you know, galleries or you know, spaces that are outside of academia. Kind of pool their resources and their lists and still have to create things that were in essence, uh, you know, classes or projects or research groups. Does anybody, uh, if you had to imagine what you'd like to see in Seattle, what would it be? Any other questions? I think we're kind of reaching on time. Sorry, we're reaching on time. So, we're reaching on time. We have time for one more question. Do you want to respond to the So, it seems to me that uh, what I would like to see. But I, but I do think that this is a serious question in that um, when we talk about how well, institutions come and they go and you know, empires come and go, well, we have the human race that is coming up in terms of climate change as well, I'm sure you know. And so there is an urgency to this. That it hasn't existed in the past. And this urgency relates also to the general decline in, 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 in the level of our living standards. I mean, 
uh, the only professor in the tenured, but he also has students as adjuncts, which is another way of saying, you know, people who teach in the public. And so it, it, that's not just peculiar to the university, it's across the board, you know, I mean, people are underemployed, with the unemployment rates are huge, and some of the people are full time jobs and part time jobs, people are getting benefits and on and on. So uh, it seems to me that all, while all of these things are very worthwhile that everybody's doing, you know, that has, that is often, uh, and it's very good what like everybody's doing, we're not doing it a, in an explicitly stated, with an explicitly stated um, uh, program, and we're not doing it together. We're doing it in an atomized way, and we're doing this young thing, and we're doing this thing, and we're doing this thing, and we're all great things, but we're not doing it. And it strikes me that uh, we need something like a poor hero statement from the 60s, which was the statement for the SDS, Students for Democratic Society, which was one of the first uh, types of political, real organized political movements that occurred in the 60s on students and faculty. So I, I believe that we need to, A, articulate what our concerns are more clearly and append them to the, and organize and connect with one another in our programs. So not just do this as a whole little thing, uh, which is a great thing. And I'd like to hear what you think. I like to see that. Well, I guess that you introducing our project is that we are aware that we have a tradition, like when I used to say, I could run this space tradition, or it is the academic in the university tradition, or the university tradition, or the learning institution. And I think that uh, when I wrote it, I'm part of the network. Instead of the hierarchy, I think you're talking about a network. 
that we even have a port on the system, if there was even a port on the vehicle to enter to get to your space, or that mountains and van or to uh, or to Inca, or to other things that are going on, or to every reading group in Seattle, I don't think we came up. We know it's the portal that was a guide to it. I don't know. I mean, you know, artists can come up with very uh, cunning ways to set this up to make clear that it is a kind of between us. It isn't a remarkable one. It isn't, it's not a party school for revolution, or it's not a party school. You know, it isn't a between those things. I mean, that's what I think is fun and um, I was just going to uh, mention the, the group, it's called the Bateable Working Group, who uh, I think really Joy is involved with, and they're uh, kind of create a kind of coalition or a resource page for their academic institutions. But once again, I think the challenge of scale or coalition building or these types of things, like depending on where they originate from, whether it's from the field park or uh, people coming from inside the academy attempting to go out or from back in this field, not everybody has a common language around what they're attempting to do, which is not necessarily a bad thing, but it's one of the challenges of uh, organizing something uh, into a, a frame. I think the other challenge and the other critique that gets thrown out at particular types of fair academic institutions is that they're simply just an extension of the existing academy. You have tenured professors now are simply giving talks in the community, organized in a particular kind of way that isn't emancipatory or challenging the system in a particular way. So there's room for a lot of critique in, uh, in, in many of these interventions as well. Um, okay, so I think we are reaching in our time. I think it's our last question. Um, but, uh, so what do you think? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I think your suggestion or your question of like resources so I was just talking to Ronnie. Uh, if any of our speakers are interested in sharing uh, just some links or readings, whatever you want to do, you can send like a Google Doc and just do a link in the Facebook group. So if anyone has been here or has been here, they can just check out whatever our speakers uh, want to contribute. But yeah, I think with that, we are going to conclude. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you, Jarski.